At the time of recording this video, we now know that Tack Stone will more than likely spend the rest of his life and die in a prison cell. But what's a mystery to many is how things got this far. To many, the sentencing of Tack Stone to 35 years in prison is unexpected and undeserved. But in this video, we're not only going to prove why it was expected, but we're going to prove and show why Tack Stone deserves every fabric of his failures. Tack Stone was born an immigrant Panamanian parents and grew up in Brooklyn. Now, his immigrant Panamanian parents was really big on education and wanted him to be a doctor, a lawyer, a scientist, an engineer, because he had a brain power for it. But instead, he chose to be a full-time menace. And when I say menace, I'm talking about full-time terrorizer of the Brooklyn streets. Taxstone was a bully, and I'm not talking about grade school bully activities. I'm talking about straight up terrorist. Well, what, your hands or what? Yeah, I'll punch him in his face. I'll see his girl, and I'll, I'll squeeze his girl butt in front of him, <laughs> and then I'll kiss him on his forehead. You know I, mean? like, I, I would like really come up with the most creative. Just emasculate this be, man. Yeah, yeah. Be disrespectful. What, more, what you think was the most disrespectful that you did? The most disrespectful thing I did was grab him and his girl's ass. God they damn. was like kissing at the bus stop. <laughs> They're kissing each other, and I grabbed both their asses at the same time. Make sure I'll punch your wife in the face when I see her. You hear stories like that, and the first thing that comes to your mind is, bro, he is embellishing for the podcast. He's on a podcast trying to be interesting, so he's embellished. I would think so too. Until I found this comment from one of his victims stating that nah, that Tack Stone would literally just go around the neighborhood trying to harass men and their wives. Bullying men, sexually assaulting their wives, assaulting their wives and moms, that's usually <laughs> the recipe for disaster. And Tack Stone will soon find out that he couldn't just go around harassing dudes' wives and the women in their lives. Because that behavior, bullying, will lead him to get shot. And he said something slick, and then I spit on him. And it's great disrespect. I spit on him, then the next day I seen him, and I went to smack him again, and he had a gun. Oof. I, I off. smacked him from behind. He didn't know it was me. And then I put him in a sleeper, and while he had me in a sleeper, that's Bomb. when he shot me. So that's the reason I, I like actually lived, because he didn't see. So he had the gun like this, yeah. so I went this way and came out here. So it, probably if he turned around, I'd have been dead because it would have went straight yeah. through my head. So For anybody else, getting shot in the act of bullying would have been their wake-up call to stop bullying people, to stop harassing people, to stop picking fights with people, but not Tack Stone. Because according to Tack Stone, after he got shot in the head, it only took him about four days before he got back out in the street to bully more people, and it only took him four days because he was bedridden in the hospital. Somewhere down the line, Tack Stone figured out fairly quickly that harassing people in person is just too risky for the reward. Like, the reward of bullying and harassing people is creating a lot of enemies, being public enemy number one, jail time, or death. And the reward is you could possibly be known as a street legend, as a menace, as a real street ninja among the 10 dusty ninjas in your neighborhood. Is that really worth it? According to Tax Stone, it wasn't. So Tax Stone decided to transition his hobby of harassing people in person to harassing people online. And that's when Tax Stone's YouTube arc started. So he decided the best use of his time was to start a YouTube series called Swagger Report where he harassed fellow Brooklyners who was too busy working a nine to five and taking care of their families to buy a lot of clothes. So the Swagger Report was pretty much the aim to harass people, make fun of them and bully them because they didn't have as much drip as him. What's better for long-term brand growth than to openly admit to your audience that the sole purpose of your broadcast is to character assassinate people that you know. A few dudes from my hood, you know I'm from Star Ray City. You know what I mean? I want to start off with this clown nigga named Well from the A. Keep on fronting, man. You need to stop fronting, man. You are a buster. I just found out your name like a year and a half ago. Knew you for years. You understand me? I knew you was Reginique's little brother, man. He was a sucker. I knew you was Charlie's cousin. The nigga that was in love with his own cousin and she was blowing everybody balls in the hood. You know what I mean? The nigga that was mad when they found out she came to the back blowing balls and all that barbarian gang balls. Apparently, swagger policing and Bulgarian balls taglines weren't enough to sustain an audience in 
his swagger reports quickly flamed out. So he transitioned to Twitter. And that was the perfect place for Tax Stone because Tax Stone has never been great at building an infrastructure, building a foundation for his ideas and creativities. So being able to simply just pull out your phone and type hatred, oh, that was like Wonderland for Tax Stone. But this is where we will see the worst version of Tax Stone. See, when Tax Stone came on Twitter, he had a mantra that he went by. His mantra was, remember, if you slap a legend, then you become a legend. I'll translate that for all the people out there who don't quite understand exactly what he means. He means, if you want to be somebody with motion, if you want to be up there with whoever you are revering, you have to put your name in their conversation as well. And for Tax Stone, putting your name in the same conversation as them is hating, attacking, harassing them, hoping they respond back to you, and now you have a career because they responded back to you. And Tax Stone took this to an extreme. During his Twitter career, he will launch unsolicited attacks on random celebrities. One of those celebrities being Rich Dallas. Now, the Tax Stone and Rich Dallas beef was incredibly one-sided. They never had no issues. Tax Stone simply watched Love and Hip Hop, crafted his view of Rich Dallas, and began to harass Rich Dallas on Twitter for months. Tax Stone even took it as far as going to a concert looking for Rich Dallas so he can slap him up nine times simply because he watched a TV show of Rich Dallas and thought Rich Dallas was soft enough that he could harass Rich Dallas and get some clout for harassing and bullying Rich Dallas. After harassing Rich Dallas for months, it would seem that Tax Stone got what he really wanted when Rich Dallas finally acknowledged his existence. You see, Tax Stone has bullied and harassed Rich Dallas into finally acknowledging him and having a conversation with him. And that would seem that that's all Tax Stone really wanted, was to be associated with somebody who's doing something with their life, who got some motion. Because after they finally met, Tax Stone would do a 40-yard sprint in 3.9 seconds to notify Twitter they had squashed their beef. If a phone call could squash the beef, then why would you be on Twitter harassing this man and his family? For months it made no sense to nobody but it made sense to tax stone because tax stone's entire game plan for breaking into the industry was to harass hate and bully anybody who had more motion than him that he believed he was in some proximity with that he could reach and build and connect with now tax stone just being a natural street bully and coming from the streets and being a menace of the streets he had another strategy, and that strategy is you go after a person that the public is now viewing as tough and as hood and as street, and you bully them publicly so people can look at you as more street. And that was the case with the Tax Stone and Math Hoffa beef. This should really go without saying, but I'm going to still say it. Before Math Hoffa was a successful podcaster, he was a controversial battle rapper. In 2013, Math Hoffa was battling Sirius Jones when Sirius Jones made a comment during Math Hoffa rapping that had the crowd laughing. And Math Hoffa got heated and upset and he punched Sirius Jones, dropping Sirius Jones to the floor. Now, after that incident, Math Hoffa was pretty polarizing. Some people thought Math Hoffa was the toughest dude in the world, others thought he was a jerk. But nonetheless, though, people thought that Math Hoffa was a real deal street dude. When Tax Stone seen how much credit people were giving Math Hoffa for being a street dude, he took issue with that and thought, yo, I mean, I know I'm tougher than Math Hoffa, so if I bully Math Hoffa online, people will now look at me as the Don Dada, tough, bully, bully, super macho, machismo, tough dude. And that's what he did. Now, Tax Stone would take to Twitter to deliver a fury of tweets about Math Hoffa. These were unsolicited tweets. Tax Tone is doing this for no reason, apparently. Talking about his baby mama, calling Math Hoffa homeless. He even went as far as to say that Math Hoffa don't got a stove. It's insane. He even said he's going to diss Math Hoffa until Math Hoffa swings on him. Essentially just inviting issues to himself that he doesn't need to have. Hey, listen, I understand. Math Hoffa ain't the easiest dude to defend either. Right? He punched a dude in a battle rap who really wasn't a threat to him. 
But nonetheless, though, tax don't taking it this far. Even if you do have your critiques about Mav Hoffa or what he did during that battle, you taking it this far, instigating a beef, hoping you run into him and saying you hope he swings on you and he's going to swing himself into a crossroad? That's crazy. It's unhinged behavior that nobody understood. Similarly, Taxton was doing all of this, instigating, escalating, hoping this leads into the streets and blood spills, all for his personal gain, all for him to be a bigger star. But is there some sort of issue with you and Matt? I don't got no issue with that nigga. You know, I be disrespecting the man there because I think he's a clown. Those are Tax Stone's own words, that he had no issue with Mav Hoffa, that he's only attacking Mav Hoffa and escalating it to the point of no return because he thinks he's able to, because he thinks Mav Hoffa is a clown and Mav Hoffa ain't really a street dude. Mav Hoffa would make a video expressing his own confusion as well as to why Tax Stone once beef with him and as to why Tax Stone was attacking him. I felt like I needed to address this whole Tax Stone thing because people keep asking me about it. How did this start? Where did it... Let's get a few things clear. I don't know this nigga. I've never met this nigga. He's never met me. The shit that he's doing, I'm guessing it's for attention. I don't know, maybe he got something personal. I called a few bitches up. I was like, yo, is your, is your baby father tax stone? They was like no, so I don't know. I don't I don't know where it's coming from, but we could get to the bottom of this shit. We could sort it all out. Now you seem like the type of person who does stupid shit because you got people around you that care about you. The they gonna hold you down. It's not man shit because you putting them in a lot of fight. Now rather than get my people's, your people's involved, you don't gotta do all that. The shit that you talking, however you feel, you get it off your chest. One, I'm a grown man. Two, you a grown man. So you should have a, a understanding of how these things work. I've gotten to the point in my career where I'm like, I'm staying away from the bullshit. I'm just taking care of my family. Post up pictures of me and my family up on the gram. Maybe you saw that and thought it was the opportune time to try to fuck with me. Math Hoffa was in disbelief. Math Hoffa thought, damn, bro, like maybe because you see I'm a family man now, I'm staying away from all the drama, from all the beef. I'm posting my family, I'm posting my kids, I'm talking about how I'm enjoying being a first time father. Maybe you seen that and thought, okay, he's an easy victim. He's weak. I can pick on him. Now, these two, unlike Rich Dallas, these two never squashed a beef. As a matter of fact, it was only as recent as 2022 where Tax Stone was back on Twitter tweeting from a prison cell more accusations about Mav Hoffa, claiming that Mav Hoffa was buying views and that his podcast numbers are fake. Now, the accusations are pretty dumbfounded because in 2023, Mav Hoffa podcast is pretty culturally relevant. Now, you can tell the numbers are kind of off if a podcast isn't culturally relevant, but doing really big numbers. But that's not the case. The Math Hoffa podcast is really culturally relevant. Like, it's huge. Now, I don't think Math Hoffa is buying views for his podcast. I believe that Tax Stone is sitting in a cold prison cell right now, and it's hard for him to digest the fact that a dude he was calling homeless only a couple of years ago now have one of the biggest hip-hop podcasts in the world, and that was a space that he once occupied. But due to his poor decisions and his hatred, his bullying, his harassment, he ended up in a prison cell and lost it all. And the man that he called soft, that he called a clown, that he called homeless, now that man is building something that he was supposed to build. Let's speak about Tax Stone's downfall. Tax Stone's downfall starts at the number 718. 718 is how many times Tax Stones tweeted at Troy Ave. Well, 718 is the last documented number. That's the last time somebody actually counted how many times Tax Stones tweeted at Troy Ave. Since then, that number has risen. Tweeting at somebody 700 plus times is pure harassment and there's really no way to shape or contort it. But a Troy Ave and Tax Stone beef is a little bit more complicated than that. 
You see, Tack Stone began to bully Troy Ave because he felt that Troy Ave would probably go down how Matt Fafa went down, how Rich Dallas went down, and Troy Ave would eventually cop please, say I don't want no problems, or go down the Rich Dallas route, which is go out of his way to reach out to quote-unquote squash the beef with Tack Stone. Tack Stone wasn't anticipating that Troy Ave was willing to take it any way that Tack Stone was willing to take it. You see, Tack Stone and Troy Ave didn't start off as enemies. As a matter of fact, they were really cordial. Some might say they were friends. As you can see from the screenshot from 2009, Tack Stone was resharing Troy Ave's mixtape and telling his audience to go ahead and check out the mixtape and download it. Their relationship dynamic was weird. It seems from an outside point of view that Tack Stone was treating Troy Ave like a helium balloon. Like when you go to a birthday party as a kid and you receive your balloon, you go outside and you want to put it up in the sky and wave it around and play with it. But when you put it up in the sky, when the balloon began to drift beyond your reach, you drag it back down. That's what it seems that Taxton was doing to Troy Ave. You see, when Troy Ave was a relatively unknown artist, Taxton was supporting him. Taxton would share his stuff, but... When Troy Aff began to ascend in the ranks and began to, you know, make a name for himself, Tack Stone began to hate and tear him down. And the way he began to tear down Troy Aff is very consistent with how he tore down other people in the past and why. See, Tack Stone had a real issue with people praising and attaching a street element of Troy Aff. He had a real issue with people calling Troy Aff a real street dude of people considering Troy Ave a gangster, super official. We've seen something very similar with Tack Stone and Math Hoffa. As Math Hoffa was ascending in the ranks of battle rap, as people began to talk about Math Hoffa as if he was a tough guy, Tack Stone had an issue with it. Even though Tack Stone and Math Hoffa never had no issues, Tack Stone being a bully, Tack Stone thinking that he's the toughest of all tough guys, had an issue with anybody else being regarded as a tough guy. Same thing with Troy Ave. As Troy Ave raps began to go viral, as Troy Ave was climbing up the charts and selling records, the public, the consumer, believed Troy Ave's raps. They believed that Troy Ave was gangster. They believed that Troy Ave was really living like that, and Tax Stone had an issue with it. Some may say he may not even had an issue. He just looked at Troy Ave as a come up. People thought that Troy Ave was gangster. He believed he could punk Troy Ave, so hence he went on a tirade of trying to punk Troy Ave. And that's when we got a fury of tweets such as these, where he's calling Troy Av Punani, he's calling him soft, he's calling him average, he's calling Troy Av a liar and saying that Troy Av is capping in his raps and he's not really living like that. He went on an entire crusade to tear down Troy Av because Troy Av was winning and the public thought that Troy Av was a gangster. If you're thinking, certainly Taxton must have had a better reason for why he went against his friend and turned him into an enemy at that particular time. Certainly there's a better reason for this. Well, <laughs> hear from Taxton Mouth himself. What's up with you and the boy Troy Ave? Because you go hard for him. Why don't you like Troy Ave or at least appreciate what he's done? Because I do honestly feel like he's at least shined a light on New York that allow other people to flourish. I don't feel that way at all. He's a lie. He's a pathological lie, and I can't fathom that. When you get on radio and you say shit like, you know, I bought New York City back with what record? You didn't. You haven't had a record yet. It's like he did your style. Your style came out, and then he had um. Um, what was the um? Then they got Diddy and Mace on it. It didn't do nothing after that. It died more after they put Diddy and Mace on it. He ain't do that yet. You have to prove yourself when you talk shit. I talk a lot of shit, and I'm willing to prove myself. So that's what I'm saying. Prove yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't keep saying that you bought the city back and then you have no records. Like Brooklyn don't come out to his performances. Like we don't. They don't go nowhere. So only people in performances is bloggers and radio. Nobody is there. Nobody from the town is saying, "Yo, let's go check this show out." Yeah. You know what no. I mean? If you ask any rapper that's, that's out there that's established from New York City, they will tell you the same thing. None of them ever felt like Troy Ave bought the city back. So that's why it was so confusing to me. His reasoning for dropping a fury of tweets going on a Twitter crusade attacking Troy Ave is because Troy Ave had too much self-confidence. Troy Ave had the nerve to say he was bringing New York back. Troy Ave had the nerve to say he was hot in his city. That right there, it, bro, it's just pure hatred, bro. That right there is you making up a reason to attack somebody. Is you instigating and trying to escalate something. 
But at that time, though, Taxton was relatively unknown. Taxton was a nobody. So Troy F. being a rapper who was ascending and popping, he could ignore, you know, Taxton's critiques. He could go without even touching or bringing light to it because nobody was really hearing it but Taxstone and his few followers. But that all changed in 2015 when Charlamagne the God and Loudspeaker Networks gave Taxstone his own podcast after Taxstone made an appearance on Brilliant Ideas with Andrew Schultz and Charlamagne the God. Now, there's a lot of theories in regards to why Charlamagne the God was so invested in giving Taxstone his own podcast. Now, there's rumors out there, if you know, you know, that after Charlemagne was ambushed and attacked by the Can I Get a Drop dudes. Uh, G, can I get a drop? What's up with y'all need drops, man? I need a drop, man. Ooh. I need a drop, baby. What's up? Come on. Let's get a drop. Apparently, Tax Stone was the one who handled that beef for Charlemagne the God in the streets. So hence, Tax Stone got rewarded. But regardless of how Tax Stone got his own podcast, Tax Season, he made the best of his opportunity. Tax Season was an instant success and an instant hit. And Tax Season became really popular. And as the podcast began to rise in popularity, Tax Stone as a personality began to rise in popularity as well. And he was doing things with MTV. He was doing things with uh, Hot 97, Power 106. His podcast, Brilliant Idiots, different appearances on Charlemagne's various shows on Comedy Central, MTV, et cetera, et cetera. So Taxton was, was becoming a household name. But as he began to rise up in his fame and in his notoriety, he didn't let the Troy Ave beef go. As a matter of fact, he sort of put his foot on the gas. As Taxton rose in the ranks, Taxton felt as if he was in a position of power now. And he was going to use his position of power to truly crush, harass, and bully Troy Ave some more. At this point, Taxstone felt as if he had a real reason to hate Troy Ave. He believed that Troy Ave stole and snaked the song All About the Money from his best friend called Manolo Rose. Manolo Rose and Taxstone is real close. So Taxstone felt as if Troy Ave snaked the song away from Manolo Rose, and he wasn't jacking it. So he had a vendetta. Now, the tax tone harassment and bullying of Troy Ave got so bad that tax tone himself told Troy Ave, bro, I've been harassing you for five years. Ain't you a street dude? Grab a stick and come and get me. And he's been telling us for the longest that he's a street nigga. So I've been harassing him for five years. And what did he do? Make a diss record. So therefore, he just showed us exactly what I said he was, a rapper. He's not a street nigga. He's admitting to harassing Troy Av and daring Troy Av to do something about it. Daring Troy Av to come and get him. So it's clear to say that Tax Stone was one, instigating, two, escalating, three, looking for trouble, looking for the smoke. Which is why it's no surprise that when Tax Stone heard that Troy Av would be performing at Irvin Plaza that night, that Tax Stone brought a gun with him and snuck into Irvin Plaza with the gun on him, looking for trouble. Now, what happened at Irvin Plaza that led to the death of Benga McFadden, that led to Troy Ave being shot in his leg, to led to another unidentified woman being shot as well? What happened there has already played out in court. The court has assigned blame to Tax Stone and sentenced him to 35 years in jail. Now, even if you don't believe that Tax Stone is responsible for 100% of things that happen inside of Irvin Plaza, the least you can say that if you harass somebody for five years, if you are escalating things for five years, if you are instigating things for five years, if you are telling that person they better come and get you for five years, if you sneak a gun into the workplace of a man you've been harassing for five years, I think you deserve everything you had coming for you. All right? It's your boy, Portic Flacco. Like the video, sub to the channel, comment for the algorithm. I'm out of here, folks. Peace.